The Angry Chicken is a production of AMove TV. Bookmark AMove.tv for more gaming and esports shows. The Angry Chicken is directly supported by listeners like you via patreon.com slash TAC. podcast about Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. This is the Angry Chicken. Greetings and welcome everyone to the Angry Chicken, the 300th episode of the Angry Chicken. I'm Garrett Weinzerl and I'm joined as always by Willie Dills Gregory. Hey dude. What up? 300. Oh. We did it. We did. We we made it to a number with two another number with two zeros another after it. Two zeros at the end. It's crazy, man. Exactly. I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> Jocelyn Moffat is also here. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Thanks. I guess I should welcome did myself I, did back. I go somewhere? I, I did. I did. I welcome myself <laughs> back. From two days ago, Jocelyn. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And our special guest for today, for reasons that are now extremely obvious, Peter Whalen. Hey guys, thank you for having me. Congratulations on 300 episodes. That's pretty amazing. Thanks, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks thanks for coming on. This was uh, this was a real treat. Uh, getting uh, you know getting some hints uh, dropped ahead of time from the community team, being like, hey, you should have Peter on on Thursday. Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna <laughs> yeah, it's, tell it's you a big why. Day. This you should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're sitting here looking at the numbers of our episodes, going, I, I guess that's the 300th episode. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it all worked out serendipity indeed it yeah it totally worked out so uh just a big thanks off the off the right off the bat to uh, team five for putting this together and and to you for taking some time out of it's still still work hours there taking some time out of your work day yeah that's it's nice i get to get to come talk to you guys talk about uh some of the changes coming up i'm excited yeah yeah it hasn't been that long since uh we, we were talking off air uh that we were sitting in the booth where we try not to be too loud because there are people right next to us in other booths at uh at blizzcon uh doing doing interviews and whatnot yeah just a couple of months that was uh, the start of rastakan's rumble that it was and we're, right. we're we're still there but but we see you know it's the, the, Rosticon's Rumble is totally different now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about yep. to get even more different. It was Druid Stone, then it was Hunter Stone, and now I don't know. We'll see. It's still going to be Hunter Stone. It is. <laughs> uh, uh, go back to Death Rattle Hunter, everybody. Go back to Death Rattle Hunter. <laughs> I don't even know about that. I really I, I can't wait. I can't wait to figure it out. It's yep. going to be fun. Yep. So uh, before we get into like, uh, we've got some fun stuff planned. Uh, man, uh, just sh- I'm going to shout out at the top of the show to uh, listener and, and longtime uh, friend of the show, Hachikumo, because he sent in some really fun games that I'm going to force Jocelyn and Dills to play Sweet. later on. But before we do that, we have uh, huge news to talk about. Just today, news came out that there's another round of balance updates coming to Hearthstone. By the Uh, way, I want to key on something you just said. Another round of balance updates (laughs) in one expansion. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa, dude. yeah we'll, going wild. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But uh, since this, you know, it is a 300th, but we, we're still here to do our job and, and report on the on the news to everyone out there listening that, That's right. you know, I don't know, doesn't feel like uh, pulling up the blog. So uh, let's just start talking about these card changes. So so first up, Cold Blood. Cold Blood is, well, it's on the it's on the nerfing block, I guess. And uh, it's going up by one mana. So it's going to cost you two mana for your cold blood. <laughs> God, Garrett, you're talking real weird. I don't know why, but you're just you're talking real weird right now. <laughs> does, like, do, does the inflection Look, of my he's voice? trying to make it dramatic, okay? Yeah, it makes <laughs> it's going up one mana. <laughs> okay, Garrett, you're just, okay. <laughs> Look, it's, it's doubling in mana. Wow. <laughs> it is. Yeah, uh, and you should get used to that because mana is going up uh, across every card we're going to talk about today. Uh, yeah. And we should just uh, talk about this and Flame Tongue Totem probably together because Flame Tongue Totem is also going up by one mana, going up to three, which is uh, has larger ramifications for Shaman than I think maybe Cold Blood going to two does for Rogue. Oh my god, yeah, huge. So yeah, so Peter, what's the deal? 
What's going on here? So, <laughs> Cold Blood and Flame Time Totem, they're going up by one mana. They're both very, very good cards that we've seen historically in a lot of Rogue and Shaman decks yep. that are powerful. They drive the types of archetypes that Rogue and Shaman does a lot, and they're basic and classic cards. So I think this is an opportunity to talk a little bit about what our philosophy is with basic and classic cards going forward, and that's basic and classic cards are great. We love the fact that they're in standard all the time, except we don't want them to be the dominant force controlling standard for all time because that makes decks feel more similar. Mm -hmm. We've seen these shaman aggressive decks that take advantage of flame tongue totem and lots of minions for ever, essentially for all of Hearthstone's existence, whether it's with murlocs or totem golems or totems or in even shaman now. And so we want flame tongue totem to be a little bit weaker. It's still a kind of card that you might put in your shaman decks, but it's not the driving force for the Shaman class. And that gives us opportunities to put different things in different expansions so that year over year, Hearthstone feels more different. And uh, similar reasoning for Cold Blood. Okay. It yeah. makes sense. It brings, so Cold Blood I look at and I, say, and I say, well, this brings it kind of in line with Eviscerate, right? Where as it deals four damage, but now, but the thing about Cold Blood is sometimes it dealt eight damage, 12 damage, right? Especially in Wild, you put it on that charging 2-1 with Divine Shield and you hit people once and then they're like, oh, I can't kill that. <laughs> and then they hit you again. You're like, geez, oh, that was a really good one mana spell. Um, so yeah, I, I I can see this. It it is definitely a deck or an archetype that will always exist. It's just I'm I'm rogue. I'm aggro because guess what I got? I got this cold blood card. So I yeah. like it. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you you frame it in a in a in a in a solid way, Peter, by kind of invoking the the history of of Hearthstone's entire meta since essentially beta. Um, I mean, we, you're right. We've been seeing Cold, uh, cold Blood and 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 Flame Tug Totem since then. Um, however, it also seems very poignant to the meta at the moment because this yeah. now removes Cold Blood from Mod Rogue, and it also removes Flame Tug Totem from even Shaman. Uh, did you consider any changes to maybe Baku or Gen? I, we've definitely talked about Baku and Gen a lot. And as you mentioned, this is a good opportunity to kill two birds with one stone, right? These are changes that will help Hearthstone in the very long term so that Cold Blood and Flame Tongue aren't the driving cards in Shaman for the next 20 years. But at the same time, they're very applicable to the metagame today. They're in Odd Rogue, Even Shaman, both of which are very powerful decks. We talked a lot about what the right thing to do with Gen and Baku. They're both very, very powerful cards that are seeing play in a wide variety of different decks. That's a great thing. We want expansion cards to be powerful and see play in lots and lots of decks, but they are absolutely the kind of things that are defining the metagame right now in probably a way that's not super healthy. It's been a long time that these are the best cards in in the classes, you know, in the classes that are playing them and mm -hmm. some of the best decks in the metagame right now. So we're investigating what the right thing to do with them are. They're not seeing any changes in these updates. We're updating a handful of individual cards, some of which are good in Gen and Baku decks. But Gen and Baku are very much something that we're looking at over the next next few weeks and next few months. Yeah, they're on the radar. So I'll, I'll say this too. I, I've been playing a lot of Wild this month uh, because obviously you guys have the Wild Open coming up. And uh, so that was a good enough incentive for me. And I actually reached Legend for the first time in Wild. And Congratulations. I played. Thank you. I only played even in odd decks <laughs> my entire run. I started with Odd Rogue, went to Even Shaman, ended up playing uh, Even Warlock uh, in the end. And that's literally all I played. And I was just like, okay, Gen and Baku affecting Wild this much is a huge factor to say, well, then how powerful are they compared to other cards in Standard, right? Because if they're, you know, Wild is obviously, that's where like your big priests exist still, you know, and stuff like that. And it's like, no, it's not even there anymore. It's just the wild and or the the odd and even deck. So yeah, uh, I, I I good. I'm glad you guys are looking at them because they're. Well, I mean, Gen and Baku must be really really difficult to balance, just period, because they impact the hero power, which is something that is just available every turn. It's not a card that needs to be drawn. It's just something that every class can always do. So I mean, mm. I know you can't give us any hints as to what you guys might be considering, but uh, I'm glad that they're same as you guys on the radar well i mean i think all of the, th the changes that our community is considering for them we've considered too we we read all of that feedback and we've come up with there's a lot of different things you can do to them but none of them are incredibly satisfying it's uh mm -hmm. it's a hard card to nerf if you just make you know gen cost a little bit more mana that doesn't really work or have worse stats sure it's yeah, a, it's it's a pretty tricky spot to be in 
it's not even really about the cards Gen and Baku themselves. It's about the effect and the and when it happens and how it's persistent through the entire game. So I mean, like changing cost on Gen and Baku doesn't really do too much. <laughs> well, unless you move them up by one. By the way, I, I do. And also you can't, you can't ignore the fact that what they do isn't n like simply just make the hero power better. They make uh, specific cards that were not better before suddenly viable because you can only choose even and odd cards. Right. So that's why you see things like raid leader, you know, you're just like, I can't, I can't choose a two cost thing that does this. I should use the three cost thing that does this. Right. So yeah, it's like you don't want to take away that aspect of it. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm that, curious. That in particular, I love. That's fantastic. Sure. That you yeah. get to use these cards that you weren't using before. It is awesome. But it's it's been a long time with Ganon Baku right now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and they're and they're sticking around for another year. Yep. Yes. Uh, and always in wild. <laughs> <laughs> and forever in wild. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, wild has a lot of stuff going on that's, that's yeah. pretty powerful. I, I will say, dude, so climbing in wild was a much more intense and frustrating experience, but also super rewarding when I got there. Because the just the variety of decks. You pick a deck that's good, and then you just hope and pray when you queue that <laughs> you get something that you're decent against because there's just so much. But uh, yeah, super fun, super fun. <laughs> I, had, I had a great time this season. So the next card that is, uh, that is up for a change is a quality. Uh, going oh, up, just, just doubling, going from two mana to four mana in uh in its cost I mean, that, that's a big change for equality yeah why why two and not three or uh yeah why up two <laughs> and think, not, sorry why go up two instead of go two three excuse me that i think we know why because if we gave equality over to odd paladin that would just they'd be able to get through super big taunts and yeah that i think that's another genbaku change right mm -hmm. that's a piece of it the other piece is that at least I think that a quality at three would still be a very powerful tool in Paladin control decks. And at some point in the next couple of years, we'd say, man, we really wish a quality was up at four mana. And that would be more of the fair point for it, where if that's a tool that your deck wants, you'll go yeah. out of your way and you'll play a quality. And a quality in Pyromancer is still a reasonable thing. A quality in Consecrate is still a reasonable thing. But it's not in all of the Paladin control decks. It's not in every Paladin well, it's not an even now in every Paladin aggressive deck. It's just an even Paladin because Odd Paladin didn't make any sense in. But yeah, I, yeah, I think Odd Paladin is one piece of that. And I think the other piece is that four mana is just the right spot for that to be where it's a power level that is a sometimes card that's coming in and out of your Paladin control decks, depending on what other cards exist in the metagame right now. You know, I also think uh, we haven't talked about the, the Hunter's Mark change, but it would be weird if Hunter's Mark was too... Inequality. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> inequality was also two. Was also like, two? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, hmm, okay. So I can do it to the whole board for yeah. the same price. That you well, Hunter's Mark doesn't hit your guys. So there's there's some difference <laughs> there. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, you could target it for sure. But still, it's a super powerful effect. It always has been. Mm -hmm. And um, and with a card like Shrink Ray in the game too, you look at that and you go, well, that's worth five. This is only worth two, apparently. Okay. And so why why do I put Shrink Ray in my deck, right? Because quality covers that. So this is interesting. Yeah. You'll start thinking about things like Shrink Ray even more, I think, now. It's a lot closer when one's five and one is four. And it's yeah. not totally clear that Shrink Ray is much better because the one health is often what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. That you, you want to clear off the minions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Hunter's Mark, it has gone up by one mana, now costs two. While we're talking about Hunter, just keep that in your brain, listeners. Uh, Emerald Spellstone is also going up by one mana, so it's going to cost six now to uh, to summon those those four wolves. Or three. N no, it's always four. <laughs> it's always. always. It's it is always, always four. Two? It no, could be two? if you're playing against Priest, you should always summon three because Master <laughs> area. Sometimes you're a rogue and you burgle the spell and that's only two wolves? There you go, yeah. yeah. Listen, it's, it's, it's like Huffer. It's always Huffer, it's always four wolves. Yeah, okay. All always. Right. <laughs> always. Um... Yeah, so I mean, with uh, you know, I don't know. Th th this is a, a bit of an overarching question, but uh, also pertains to Hunter. I mean, with the exception of the Emerald Spellstone change, th these are these are more nerfs to the classic and basic set. I mean, can you can you tell us about the process behind what gets nerfed versus what goes to the Hall of Fame? One of the things we've been talking about a lot recently, and really for the last year, is. What are the classes in Hearthstone supposed to do? What are the appropriate things for a priest to do or a rogue to do or a hunter to do? 
And so generally speaking, when there's cards in basic and classic that really speak to what a class should be doing, uh, things like wild growth is a great example, we'll nerf them to a lower power level rather than removing them from classic and moving them to the hall of fame. Uh, things that are doing things that a class is not supposed to be doing, especially as we've been identifying more clearly what those things are, will tend to move to Hall of Fame instead of just directly nerfing. Or cars that we feel are unhealthy for the standard environment as a whole, that are huge design constraints for us long term, things like Conceal, will tend to move to the Hall of Fame instead of just nerfing because we just don't want that design constraint on us in, in standard. Uh, there's also a handful of cards that are just really cool, really iconic, and really, really fun to play with, but just way too strong for standard, but we want to keep around for wild. Uh, Ragnaros is a good example of that. Cold Light Oracle to some extent, where it was really limiting what kind of battle cry uh, build around type stuff and what kind of battle cry decks could exist, where it's the kind of card that we really want to preserve for wild, but we didn't want to design around for standard forever. Makes sense. Gotcha. Is the, is the, I mean, we've only seen Hall of Fame rotations happen with the with the standard rotation as well. Is you know, is the time of that, the time limitation of that, a factor? Or have have you ever discussed moving a card into the Hall of Fame outside of the standard rotation? I think we'll move cards to the Hall of Fame outside of standard rotation if we have to. Uh, the biggest concern for us is that we don't like breaking people's decks, uh, especially for players that are a little bit less engaged, less engaged than your average Reddit user or Twitter user. That are, that are messaging us, uh, those guys really, really hate it when they come into Hearthstone and their deck has a big red X through it. And that mm. has to happen on the day of standard rotation. There's no way around it, but we'd really like that not to happen too often. And so if we can pay that price in terms of what's happening to our users just once a year, that's much better than if it has to happen every couple of weeks or even if it has to happen twice a year. Yeah. That said, if it's the right thing to do, then we'll absolutely do it. Yeah, I heard XR say that in a in a recent interview too that that the changes are not necessarily made just to make changes. They're always made with a purpose and always we decide that we need to do this, we'll do it. And I think that's the right philosophy. I will say though, when, when you changed uh when you changed what should we call it, level up, I locked into my Asia account and I just queued in with my odd paladin and I was like, wait, what the hell just happened? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel bad about that. Sure. I think it's the right nerf to the card. Moving yeah. it to seven would have been pretty sad, but we talked a lot about, oh man, this is, some people are going to be sad playing their odd paladin with sure. this. Well, I was only sad one game. It was fine. <laughs> and, I, and I couldn't even lose stars at that rank. It told me afterwards. So That's, that's great. I'm glad. <laughs> and now you can lose uh, even fewer, well, you could lose the same amount of stars, but now you have fewer stars to lose, Dills. By the way, on Tuesday's show, we said at the end of it, everyone should just go play Hunter. I guess we have to retract that statement now. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll have to see. We'll have to I mean, see. It still I mean, seems like Spellstone's gonna be real good at six mana. Um, it was just so good at five, right? So I'm pretty hopeful. I think. I think the Hunter's Mark change is actually not gonna affect that much because it was a nice tool, and it still will be good, right? Because you're still imagine you you equip your Candle Shot and then you still kill like a Lich King. Like I don't know. That just seems fair to me. Still, so. That explains it. I played a lot more Hearthstone than usual because I wasn't on the show Tuesday. So instead of being on the show, I just laid in bed feeling mm. crappy and played more Hearthstone. And uh, I checked my stats today and my stats this week, 50% of the decks I'm playing against are Hunter. There's definitely a lot of Hunter on the ladder right now. And it seems like, I mean, we've got so many different ways to play Hunter right now. It's been a fairly dominant class, but... Hunter's only really been dominant since the nerfs after the launch of Rostagon's Rumble. So why change Hunter's Mark and Spellstone at this point in time? Why not kind of give Hunter a little room to dominate, a little room to breathe? And also, why not touch Deathstalker Rexar if you did want to change Hunter? Hunter's very powerful. They've been pretty powerful for a while, though not as dominant as they are right now until the post-Rostagon nerfs. Uh, why not touch Deathstalker Rexar? In part because he's going to rotate into wild in a couple of months. In part because people really love that card. He's insanely fun to play, and it's exactly the kind of card that we want to preserve in wild for people that really, really enjoy that experience. So we'd, we'd like to keep that around and change some of the other cards around him. He's also just this unique, really cool design that's that's inspired a lot of people. He's one of several players, a, a lot of players' favorite cards. And so... Preserving that if we can is is really valuable. 
Uh, why step in right now with Hunter? Hunter's really prevalent, and we're trying a philosophy of stepping in a little bit more often. We've seen two sets of nerfs post Rasticon's Rumble, the one that's about to happen, and the one that happened back in December. And so we're seeing how the community responds, and we'd love to get feedback from, from people like you, from people listening to the podcast. Tell us what you think. Do you like more frequent nerfs? Are more frequent nerfs a problem? We're going to be looking at data to see how players engage with it as well, but just getting feedback from our community is really, really valuable on this kind of thing. Yo, well, speaking of that, uh, I mean, these are coming at a much faster pace. Is that is that something you guys consciously want to continue to do? Is So you just need feedback on that? or We'd love to get feedback on it. We're, yes. we're constantly experimenting with what's the right thing to do in Hearthstone, and right now we're trying out what if we step in more frequently to make changes to cards, to uh, shake up the metagame a little bit more often and do things that we think are right and that will make the game better? Uh, we also have some more tooling support, some more engineering support over the last year or so that make it easier for us to do this kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, that mean that we can make some of these changes without requiring a client patch and force everybody to download a bunch more stuff. And so that makes it us more willing to make these changes because uh, that's gotten both developed and also hardened over the last year so that we're very confident in it and it's very easy for us to use and less of a burden on our engineers and producers. That's so it's more of a know decision that. that's just made by the design team, not by like everybody has to be like, okay, are we ready to do this? You can actually just design team perspective and say, this is what we should do and uh, then it can we, happen. Right? We definitely need support from other people to make it happen, but a lot yeah. less support than we needed to. And it's a lot less of a burden on our engineering and production teams. So it just means that that's it great. doesn't prevent us from doing as much other stuff. Oh, cool. Well, uh, sweet. <laughs> very cool. I'm, I mean, just for the record, I'm stoked about the speed that we've seen the uh, last, the, the, now the, the, the first two rounds of balance updates since Rastakhan. That's, that's great. Digging it. Yeah, feedback. Yeah, me too. Up. If you want instant <laughs> feedback, I say yes. <laughs> yes Fantastic. Yay. Yeah. But yeah, both positive and negative feedback. We, we love <laughs> to hear it because it helps us make the game better. All right. You heard it, everybody out there. Just be respectful, Feedback. everybody. Be where, respectful. where do you, by the way, by the way, this is a question that I've uh, I've heard people ask. Where do you guys do you guys just read everything? Is there a preferred place that you guys like getting your feedback? So do you like uh, notarized you up... emails? Uh, <laughs> do you want me to like take a candle and put my insignia on an actual physical envelope and send it a to scroll, you? Scroll, just maybe? send text to Dean. Just just yeah. text Dean all the time. Okay, uh, got it. All no, no, seriously, Dean. we look at tons of different websites across the team. Personally, I look at Reddit, I look at Twitter, I, and I look at Hearthpone a lot, and okay. our, our Blizzard forums. Those are the main places that I look. A lot of other people look other places as well. We've got people who speak other languages. Uh, there's several Chinese speakers who engage with some of the Chinese social media and some of the social sites there as well. So we get feedback from a bunch of different places. So wherever you're most comfortable, okay. post your feedback there. Awesome. That's rad. Um, so, so getting back to our, our, our uh, uh, shotgun of questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, the, so these questions or these, uh, these changes, uh, I mean, they, they hit a good amount of popular decks in the meta that we're currently in. Uh, we're, we were curious, how, how much do you all discuss future design when you make balance changes? You know, like what's, what's coming down the pipeline? A lot. Though we tend to design future cards with um, the world in mind without the balance changes because we just don't know exactly what balance changes we're going to make. We don't have balance changes planned for six months from now. We'll, we'll respond to what the appropriate thing is in the metagame at the time. Mm -hmm. Whereas we have cards designed going up to, say, a year-ish out where we are, that's at least the stuff that we're working on and thinking about actively. Generally speaking, we'll spend some time on those sets closer to their release, but that's the kind of things that we're thinking about. That said, as we're making these balance changes, we often are looking at what's coming out uh, next year and what are the balance changes we can do right now that'll lead to awesome metagames in the future. I'm not going to say we always hit on that 100%, but that's certainly something that we keep in mind. Well, I mean, if you guys can make changes this quickly, then it feels like... Yeah, it can be less of a consideration, right? Because you know that it's possible to hit things when they become a problem. So. Sure, but we don't want to dig ourselves into a hole sure, if we can yeah. help it. You don't want to <laughs> <laughs> We're like, ah, we could just screw it up because we could just fix it later. That's <laughs> on life, right? We We'd rather not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're a, little, we're a little biased here. We like changes because then the show writes itself. It's like, what are Ooh, we talking about the day? It makes our job easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about the card changes, clearly. <laughs> 
Well, speaking of changes, can you give us, I know like everything we saw in this round of nerfs is just changes to mana cost. Can you give us any kind of insight into what other changes you might have thought about making other than just changing mana cost? I know that's kind of your preferred change because it's the easiest to kind of wrap your head around as a player, but is there anything else you played around with? We talked about a bunch of changes for the cards. A, a lot of them don't make that much sense if you change some of the other numbers on them. So if you change Spellstone down to doing, say, one, two, three wolves, that's pretty bad. That sort of levels up into being Force of Nature. It's three, three Force yeah. of Nature, which is pretty good. But uh, it's a little bit, it's meaningfully weaker, I think, than six mana version of Spellstone. Uh, for Flame Time Totem, we talked about plus one attack, but then it's Dire Wolf in a class with probably mm, worse yeah. stats. That feels pretty bad, whereas at three mana, it feels more of a unique niche. Uh, equality is pretty hard to do a meaningful change to it that still keeps it feeling like equality, but isn't just a mana change. Uh, so some of them are in that space. Hunter's Marks is similar, where what Hunter's Mark does kind of doesn't lend itself well to a text box change. It lends itself well to a mana cost change. No, that makes sense. Like I, I look at a card like the you know the quest in Rogue, and that like going down to four four was like oh that just makes sense because the power level is the five fives right and things like that but yeah when you talk about quality it's like do we make it all two health what the hell does that do you know? <laughs> yeah i suppose that's something you could do we didn't really talk about that because that's, sure. that's that just feels pretty weird bizarre yeah yeah <laughs> you you introduce a uh, point uh, five health to the game <laughs> there you go yeah. oh man it would be so much easier to balance things if we could do a one percent you know, increase oh, in the that. cost of this card. <laughs> I, I'm envious of games like Overwatch sometimes that can do can do small sure. tweaks. Just looking at I it. I talked like... about that on my stream with with people one time. Was like make a card game where all the numbers are these crazy numbers, like a thousand and forty seven, <laughs> and then you can make things, you know. It, it is a lot harder to get your head around that. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone starts with 854 health. And you're just like, uh, what? That's what I like, I like so much about talking about Hearthstone is that I get to talk about numbers because I also talk about Heroes of the Storm and it's we never mention oh, numbers because yeah. it's pointless. There's so many numbers. Uh, you it's can't, hard. You can't Once I can't count on my brain. fingers, then it's, it's really tricky. <laughs> That's why you have toes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just don't go over 20. Oh uh, man! Um, I mean, while we're on the on this the same subject, I mean, it, it's been a long time since it's been invoked. But is, is the soul of the card philosophy still a major factor uh, when when changing cards, or, or has the the culture at Team Five changed in any way, or, or like around balance changes? So memes aside, the the idea of soul of the card that cards have a purpose and that when you play them, you associate this this effect with a quality. And mm -hmm. if we changed a quality to instead be uh, make all minions three threes. That's an interesting card. It still feels like it's the word equality, but it's not It's not equality anymore. And that that is a real thing. Uh, we try not to use the phrase soul of the card because uh, <laughs> it's, it's very much a meme. But yeah. at the same time, yeah, that idea of cards mean something. And when you play Animal Companion, you expect to get one of three companions, and they should be beasts. That's, that's a really important piece of it. When you play Hunter's Mark, it should set a minion's health to something low. And we, we want those cards to still feel like that. Flame Tongue Totem shouldn't give your hero plus two attack. It should it should help out your minions in some way. I, yeah. You hear the ghostly cry of Warsong Commander anytime you you uh, consider one of those changes. <laughs> Warsong Commander died for that meme, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I want to com commend you guys, uh, like we said, on making multiple balance changes so quickly. Um, can you talk about? Uh, oh, well, you actually did already talk about this. We, we covered this. Resource <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> you were, yeah, you're way ahead of us, Peter. Are you looking at the show notes? <laughs> <laughs> I believe we did get the questions ahead of time. <laughs> we did get the questions ahead of time. So, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah he, he's on it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, we definitely talked about this. I'll, okay, I'll grab this one. Uh, how do you guys feel about the polarizing style decks a la Odd Warrior? It's, I know Quest Rogue was kind of the originator of this conversation. Uh, it's not the first ever polarized deck, but it was one of the most. Now, I think basically Odd Warrior is the one that's left. Uh, how do you guys feel about those types of decks? Is that something you're also paying attention to? We're always going to have polarizing decks. Some decks are going to have better matchups against other things, and you can build your decks in ways that make it more and more polarizing if you want to. I think uh, Freeze Mage versus any kind of warrior, control warrior, say, was one of the canonical, this is a horrible, horrible matchup that you don't want to be in. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 
Freeze Mage originally had fairly polarized matchups in general. And so I think that kind of deck is always going to exist. I think the prevalence of those decks is very much something that we're talking about and looking at. Odd Warrior in particular, it's not personally my favorite deck. Uh, there's people on the team who do like it. There's people on the team who dislike it. I think uh, Control Warrior in general is a great thing to have. I think that is very, very much what Control, what Warrior is about. There's this fantasy of Warrior, and you look at the hero power, and it says, I should be a defensive class. Mm -hmm. But Odd Warrior in particular does push them in a more polarized direction than something like, say, Taunt Warrior or Quest Warrior. Mm. And, and, yeah, and, it's I, not my favorite deck at all. I hate playing it or against it, but you know. And I, I know this isn't this wasn't on the the questions ahead of time, but I'm going to hit you out of the blue with like the hardest hitting question ever because you oh, just no. brought it up. That's... I'm curious, what is your favorite deck of all time? Oh, uh, geez, Gary, come on! Like, yeah, man has a family, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Go easy King, on him. <laughs> King Crush Hunter is my favorite deck of all time. Okay. From before Whispers of the Old Gods, there was a version of Mid Rage Hunter that played King Crush and Ragnaros that I, I played a ton of. And it was. So did you just pay their mana cost? How did that, does that work? <laughs> you yeah, you wait, just you paid them. for King Crush. Hang you on. You paid for King Crush, and you paid for Ragnaros, and you just had a bunch of reach against some of the the control decks because that meta game was a bunch of Secret Paladin, which you had reasonable game against. It's just a pretty aggressive mid range hunter deck, and then you had to get pretty good matchups against like Combo Druid or a Control Warrior at the time, and having some more reach with King Crush and Ragnaros really helped you out. Well, I mean, how do you feel? How do you feel now with like the 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 discounts? You must feel like the the guy that like dropped all this money on CDs, and then the next day Napster <laughs> comes out. You're just like Peter, you don't have to pay for King Crush anymore. You can just get it for free. That's true. I do like Death Rattle Hunter. I, I played a bunch with the Boomzuka Hunter when Ooh. Boomsday came came out. That was okay. also pretty fun. And uh, also, I revisited it when Rust Against Rumble came out. And there's the two mana Resurrect All Your Beasts that died this turn. Hmm. Also pretty fun. Uh, so I, I've enjoyed some of the big beast hunter that's come out lately. Uh, I like uh, Odd Rogue quite a bit right now. I'm not sure if that's an answer I'm supposed to give, but I think it's a pretty good, like, here's a tempo aggressive deck. There's a fair amount of gameplay. I like Myra's Unstable Element a lot. I think it's a fun card to play where you, there's a lot of skill testing as to exactly when do you cast it, but it gives you a bunch of reach towards the end of the game. And sometimes it doesn't quite work out. Uh, so I, I like Odd Rogue quite a bit of the sort of current metagame decks. So you like Odd Rogue, and yet you signed off on Cold Blood, huh? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> just, right. just because I personally enjoy playing you. the deck doesn't mean it's not right for the game <laughs> sure. that we uh, we make it a little bit weaker. All I right, think go Odd Rogue's right. going to be just fine on going Tuesday. Going off script one more time, who in Team 5, if you see their name pop up when you're queuing, are you like, oh, man, I got to play this guy? Like, somebody who just, like, is just can't beat. Oh, man. I mean, anybody on Final Design is pretty good. Okay. Keaton, sure. Keaton's pretty good. Chucky oh, yeah, is Chucky, a sure. historically yeah. good player. Yeah. Uh, Dean is very, very good. Ixar, Reels, uh, Ryan Masterson, insanely good. Puffin, Stephen Chang, insanely good players. So, right. I guess anyone from the balance team? Okay. <laughs> balance team, stay away from those guys. So, so, the team whose job it is to be good at the game, you don't want to play mm. against them is what you're telling us. Well, they're nice guys, but I'm going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll emote hello at you at the beginning is what you're saying. Yeah, They will. And, and well played whenever I uh, make a, sure. a great play. They don't BM you when they have lethal. Yeah, very nice guys. <laughs> <laughs> they'll just win. Yeah. <laughs> so one more quick question for you. More about wild than standard. We talked a little bit about Rexar earlier on and how um, you decided not to maybe play with him. One of the reasons was that he was going to be rotating to wild. So do you take a look at what's happening over in the wild meta as often as you take a look at the standard meta and change cards over on that side? And obviously the elephant in the room with this question and conversation is really Barnes. <laughs> mm. We Good definitely bar. don't look at wild as often as we look at standard. Our, we focus on standard more than we do on wild, but wild is certainly very, very important to us. We pay a lot of attention to what's going on in the wild metagame. Uh, in the last year, Naga Sea Witch, Aviana, those both created pretty bad moments. Barnes is very much a card that was on our list. We talked about it a lot for whether or not it should be included in, in this nerf patch, if we should wait and see exactly what's going to happen in wild going forward. Uh, the Big Priest, the deck that primarily uses Barnes, is not the most powerful deck in the metagame right now. Some of the even and odd decks are. And so we decided not to step in on Barnes right now. Big Priest is a, a fantasy and a gameplay pattern that there's a lot of players that really like. And we're more reluctant to mess with things in Wild because mm -hmm. players that play Wild 
part of the reason they play it is so that their cards don't change and so that things don't change out from under them and that they get to play this deck that they love forever. And I think that's a really healthy thing. And so we are more reluctant to, to change those cards. That said, if we need to, and Barnes is still very much a question mark as to whether or not we need to, but cards like Aviana or Naga Sea Witch will step in. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and also say, uh, you know, playing, I, I do play quite a bit of wild, not just this month. This was just like the most I've played, but I really, really like what you guys did with Molten Giant. Uh, and so instant feedback again, think about that more often. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool to just get that card back, you know, because it was a card that created a lot of, you know, to me, I think it created a lot of interesting gameplay and like, okay, I'm going to get really low in health and then boom, I got you. Uh, and it also creates interesting gameplay when you know the other guy has it. And you're like, well, do I hit his face or not? You know, and that kind of stuff is really cool. So maybe, uh, maybe Yag Saran, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't listen to him. <laughs> don't listen to Dills. You you leave Yag Saran alone. <laughs> well, no, but it, it is an interesting question. Is is unnerfing more cards? Because especially where the power level of Hearthstone with all the cards that are available now has changed a little bit are you know reverting some of the changes you made to older cards that are wild only is that something you'd ever consider it's on the table it's not something that we're looking at right now i don't think there's any plans to unnerf some of the wild cards unnerfing some of the cards that are in standard i think is less interesting to us for a lot of the reasons mm -hmm. i talked about for basic and mm -hmm. classic that we don't want those cards to carry a lot of the the weight so that the there those decks are powerful forever you just kind of see the same things over and over again year over year yeah i think that's one of the things that you know we've always talked about is like it makes sense that mage has a fireball right and you should probably always have a fireball but then there's like certain cards where you're like yeah so forever i will always know that it's a shaman they're gonna have a flame tongue i think that's like i really like that you guys are looking at cards like that and saying yeah six years is probably enough <laughs> to that card every single day. and i think three mana flame tongue is a great example of a card where sometimes you're going to put that in your shaman deck there's going to be sure. metagames or archetypes where you just have a hole at three mana and you're playing this token type strategy and you're going to want flame tongue and i think that's a really healthy place for basic and classic cards to be where they're filling in the holes that the current expansions don't fill mm -hmm. yeah if i'm playing an aggressive rogue that's not an odd rogue i still want cold blood like i still want to deal damage to you right so yeah these are good yeah i like them well peter i i thank you for uh for joining us for the 300th episode and taking the time to come out Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. It was it was fun. I, I love talking about Hearthstone cards. <laughs> so if, yeah. uh, if if folks want to want to get in touch with you uh, on social media or anything, where can everybody find you? Yeah, Twitter's the easiest place to reach me at Legendary Ferret. I go through periods of activity and inactivity, mostly related to whatever's going on at work or my personal life more than the Hearthstone world. But I, I try to respond when I can. So 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 right now uh, we're a few months out from standard rotation. Busy, a little busy, a little busy over there. Right now, it's a little busy. It's a little busy right now. <laughs> Not too much. It's good. Not too Unless much Twitter for you at the moment. More designing. Got it. Awesome. Well, well, thank you again, Peter, and uh, we'll we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Congratulations again on 300 episodes. That's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Just all right. Well, now that he's here. gone, all these changes suck. Right? It's the yeah. worst. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> You're so mad. <laughs> no. It, I, I, overall, I like these changes. I you know I recently fell back in love with even shaman, so I am a little like oh. But it's I yeah, feel like it's, it's more personal. It's still fine. All right, I you want to you want to know my my single biggest concern? Okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, shit's gonna get real slow after these changes. Like the, the game was already slowing down. I think this is like oh, this I is see. the e break. Yeah, but equality is a huge change too, mm -hmm. and that's one of those decks that's making things slow, right? Yeah, but. All the Mechathun variations, I think, are going to start doing way better after these changes. Um, I still think OTK Paladin's going to be fine, and obviously until the standard rotation. Well, if uh, anything, it's almost a buff to that, because uh, higher cost on equality, if you're casting equality, then your Shrivala is cheaper faster. Oh, I didn't even think about Shrivala. You're right. Shrivala got cheap fast enough anyway. Shrivala was cheap fast. <laughs> you're right. Now he's going to get cheaper <laughs> even faster. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like I, I don't know. I, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see people looking for other ways to be aggressive that aren't just playing odd or even you know um, um you know what i'm you know the first thing i'm gonna do after these changes the first deck that? i'm gonna lock in yeah murloc mage i'm going back to murloc Ooh, mage murloc mage you know you can always rely on, yeah there's always money in the bit in the murloc mage right? <laughs> I'm the stand. I, uh 
Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I think though too, there has been a little bit of a, of a, a lack of these kind of tribe decks, right? And I think we might see more of that. Like the elemental hand mage, I think could become mm. much more powerful. They did not get touched here. Uh, you could see, like you said, the murloc thing could come back a little bit. You could also see the control dragon priest have a resurgence here. So I, miss I don't dragons. think we're necessarily just going to see all of a sudden like tons of Mechathun. I think there's going to be there's a lot of decks here that were a little bit held down by what that paladin was doing that now I think the equality change, like you're going to not be able to clear their board on turn four. Mm -hmm. I tell six to pyro equality. Like that's a lot of damage coming at your face before you get to do that. So yeah, I, I I'm excited to see what happens. I I'm always surprised a little bit, but I think I'm going to, I'm just going to say mid range strategies are going to be a little more viable now and not necessarily just odd and even versions of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. I you know, fair. I, but, I, I, you're not totally wrong though. Like slow decks are definitely getting a little bit of help here. I said mm -hmm. I was concerned. Uh, <laughs> not, not that it's the end of days, but. I am really excited that Peter said that they are looking again in Baku because I think that they are really controlling a lot of what's going on in Hearthstone right now. And because they're going to be around for a whole nother year, I mean, mm -hmm. it just feels bad that everything is just odd this or even that. So I'm yeah, glad that it's kind of, it seems to be opening up a little bit more potentially for other decks. Mm hmm. Like I mentioned in Wild, they are dominating, and that's yeah. that's I think a huge barometer to is are these cards too much? Because mm -hmm. Wild is supposed to be where everything's super powerful, and yet somehow yeah. Gen and Baku are at the top of the list. Yeah. So yeah. do the Gen and Baku lists change much if you go over to Wild? Like does oh, yeah. Wild no, sure. come and look different? They they're definitely way different. Like uh, the odd rogue has like, a lot of uh, pirate package stuff in it. Mm -hmm. um, and the even shaman obviously has things like totem golem and flame wreath faceless and stuff oh, like I that. forgot about totem golem. <laughs> yeah, and also you remember you that six mana golem? card that gets cheaper every time you play a totem? Mm-hmm. Well that thing sucks. <laughs> zero cost five fives popping out all over the place. Uh and then obviously like Ragnaros is still a thing in Wild, so you can play that in your even decks. And then even uh even Warlock. Uh, has molten giants and it also has um the four mana faceless thing that copies one of your guys and makes it a taunt with the same stats i can't remember what it's called right now but when you play zero cost eight eights and then you make four cost eight eight taunts next to them it's pretty brutal so they, they yeah they're way but different brutal fun just, right <laughs> sure i mean that's what i played at the very end to get the legend i went nine and one or something like that to get the legend so it was wow yeah, I was playing all those faceless shambler. Thank you, Hachikuma. Uh, Hachikuma just always there when you need him. Yeah. Uh, but I was, yeah, I was playing a lot of the even shaman odd rogue, and then at the end, I was just like, I'm just treading water with these decks. And I kept playing against these even warlocks. I was like, man, they suck to play against because you can't hit their face because then they play molten's. But if you don't hit their face, then they just play mountain giants. Like, what do you do? So I was like, I think I can't beat them. Join them. And, How do I yeah. even? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I, you're, you're, you're literally, you're just, you're, you're playing against them. You're just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Am I supposed to, am I supposed to develop onto the board and then get defiled? Am I supposed to, what do I do? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's looking to climb in wild, try that even more luck. It's good. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's good. So do any other decks y'all are like, Oh, I'm locking this in. This is happening. I think that there's some experimentation maybe that could happen around an even hunter deck. Um, oh. You've got Rexar. <laughs> well, you've got Rexar that's even, right? And then now you've sure. got Spellstone and all the secrets. So those don't have to be in opposite decks now. So I, it's something I'll, I'll at least experiment with, play around with. You know what's going to be real good now is my odd quest hunter. Oh, yeah. That's there coming you for you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually played that last night and I won my only game with it. I was like, this is a stupid meme. It's not going to work. And then I was like, oh, shooting you in the face for three is actually kind of good. <laughs> Definitely speeds up the clock. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm thinking, I, I really think we're going to start to see more of the, like, I think the even paladin is going to become even more popular. It's already been pretty popular, but it doesn't rely as heavily on things like equality as the control stuff does, right? So yeah, I think we're going to see that for sure. I definitely think Odd Warrior is still going to be a thing, but I think you have to play the quest now for sure, because if you get more of these Megathune things, you need some way to pressure their face, right? Yeah. Um, 
But I yeah, feel like I, the um, the Quest version was becoming the more popular version of it anyways, right? Just because it had that rag hero power to kind of close out yeah. games. So I feel like more and more people were, were going in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I think we could also see resurgence of a zoo warlock because, um, you know, things like the equality and stuff in those, those paladin decks were really, really bad for them. Also, they could not, they, like, they put a lot of early pressure on. But then a hunter is just like spellstone. Mm -hmm. I have more pressure. Uh, one turn later for the spellstones is a big deal, I think too. Yeah. I, want to, I, want to, I miss zoo. I'm, I think I'm ready, ready for uh, zoo to be a, a solid climbing deck. I hope. I hope you're right. Yep. Hope you're right. I, like right now, though, honestly, it's too hard to say. I mean, I look at these cards and I say, okay, definitely these decks got pinged, but are they suddenly terrible now? Like, does Odd Rogue suck because it doesn't have cold blood, or is it still fine because Hench Clan Thug and a two damage dagger is still really good right um i think i think rogue will still be fine i think hunter will yeah. still be fine um it obviously loses a lot of that burst potential though because when you could leroy cold blood for 10 out of hand you know that was that was a big deal so do you think even shaman is fine because i don't think it is flame no, tongue because, is a really big piece of that deck yeah totem on one into flame tongue on two to kill your one drop was a pretty big deal and yeah. you won't be able to do that anymore so yep Coin primal fin totem on one in the flame tongue on two was amazing. Oh, yes, totally. I, uh, yeah, I think even Shaman takes a really, really big hit here. Um, that being said, that you know, their big power spike was on turn eight, so maybe that's still okay. It's just one mana hero power doesn't really do anything for you anymore if you can't utilize things like flame tongue. So, yeah, like you need to be able to buff them. Obviously, earthen might is still a thing, but. Well, we, we still have uh, quite a bit of show to do. A lot of fun stuff coming up for the 300th. Uh, before we get to that, we have a sponsor to thank for today's episode, and that's Harry's Razors. They are back. It's it's fitting that Harry's is our sponsor today because they are our longest-running sponsor. I believe this is year three of Harry's sponsoring the Angry Chicken. Uh, you can check out their offerings at harrys.com slash TAC. But we all use Harry's Razors here. Dills, what, you know, what, what is one of the things you like so much about your Harry's Razor? First of all, it's the friggin' less, like the least painful razor I've ever used in my life. I've never once snagged, which is always a big deal. And you know, like one of my favorite moments in, in, my, in my daily morning routine is when I put on a fresh cartridge on my Harry's razor. I'm just like, oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. It's gonna be good yeah, and it's gonna be. completely fresh and barren, shorn, <laughs> ready, ready for the barren. world. <laughs> if someone was writing a romance novel about Willie Dills Gregory and they had to describe mm. his shoulders, they would yeah. choose the word barren. Sure. <laughs> like yeah, if I were Fabio, instead of my, you know, my chest and my abs being on display, it would very much be a prominent shoulder. I'd have the shoulder <laughs> forward. Look how smooth and shiny that is. Uh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but yeah, Harry's wants you to start the new year off right. They've created a trial offer. You can claim yours by going to Harry's.com slash TAC. That's a $13 value trial set. It comes with everything you need for a close and comfortable shave. You get a weighted ergonomic handle, a five blade razor with a lubricating strip and a trimmer blade. And you can get into places like this, like really precisely and clean up that line. It's wonderful. You get a rich lathering shave gel and a travel day coverage. You can take it with you. So uh, listeners of Angry Chicken, you can redeem your trial set over at harrys.com slash TAC. Again, make sure you go to harrys.com slash TAC to redeem your offer. And let them know that we sent you, and you will also support the show in the process. So we thank Harry's for supporting our show for this long, also on the 300th episode. And we thank you all for going to harrys.com slash TAC and claiming that trial offer. 